supplies of heaven. The greatest distraction I have seen in the lives of believers is this issue of our daily bread. The issue of trying to make ends meet. And the rate at which believers are being distracted by the worries and the cares, especially as regards our needs. There has to be a system to address it. If not, a time will come when on Sunday churches will be empty. A time will come when you will organize crusades and you will find people saying, Look, I, I have four jobs because I'm trying to make ends meet. I, my, my child's school fees has been increased to uh, by times five. And I have to make sure ends meet. God, please wait. When I make it, I can come to you. And if you disturb me, I will come with a seed and sow it to you. Psalm 23 Lord may this message bless your body In the name of Jesus This is how I read this scripture If the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want it Verse 2 He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leaded me beside the still waters verse 3 he restored my soul he leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake uh -huh. yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod thy staff they comfort me 5 thou preparest a table just leave that verse this is what we are dealing with tonight. Thou preparest a table, not a sword. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here is the miracle. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. May that be our testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. That your cup will run over transgenerationally. That you will get to a point where because of you, it will be that you have brought light, you have brought salvation and empowerment to your loved ones. I believe that the greatest attack on the body of Christ will come in the area of divine supplies. Supplies for kingdom advance. It is no news that... God wants us to be able to have the level of overflow and abundance. And this is not in some carnal, um, self-centered way. No, we are talking kingdom here. Are we together? That it is the will of God, please listen very carefully, to bring us to a point by His grace where we access the supplies of heaven that can afford us the opportunity, listen carefully, to be able to spend our lives by spending our time serving the Lord. Remember the teaching that I did here on time. Certain things about time that we need to learn. That all that you have in life is time. Are we together now? That means whatever you give your time to, you have invested part of your life to. Are we together now? Yes. That our lives are time dependent. And whatever you commit your time to. Is what you have given your life to. And so Satan knowing the value of time. Has manipulated a system. That compels the average person to commit most of his time. On mundane pursuits. So that we do not have time left. To serve the purposes of the kingdom and advance the gospel and lift the name of the Lord. So it's not the issue of 
poverty or prosperity or abundance or lack is a fight for time satan is targeting your time not your pocket he's using your pocket to target your time because he knows that if you can create a system around your life where god is not prioritized he has captured you the time of the average believer is spent worrying is spent thinking of needs here and there and i want to tell you categorically it is not the will of god you will never be able to serve the purposes of god that way as a man of god it's impossible to have the time to settle down and prepare a quality sermon well researched with prayer to bless people when there are all kinds of concerns where will we get the fuel for the generator where are we going to rent the keyboard many people lie as if it doesn't matter it does matter when your landlord comes knocking at your door you will be surprised to see how it will influence your prayer life are we together now that says and have you ever been in a situation that gave you concern you lost appetite has that happened to someone that you sat down you are not sick or you are fine but there's a plate of food in front of you and you cannot eat because you are worrying you wake up in the night and you are stressed out are you not seeing that death is killing us give us psalm 112 this is God's idea of a man, of a family that is a true representation of his, of his abundance and his supplies. He says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Take note. One, that man fears the Lord. Number two, he delighted greatly in his commands. So that's the secret of that man. That that man is blessed. Go back to verse 1. He is blessed because he fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands. Verse 2 says, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. And then it says, The generation of the upright. That means that the impact of that man transcends a generation. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Verse 3 says, Wealth and riches shall be where? Please talk to me believers That wealth and riches shall be in his house And in spite of that wealth and riches His righteousness endures Now this is what you cannot get with Satan If you ever get wealth and riches this way Your righteousness will not endure Because it will force you to dapple your hands in all kinds of things That by the time you are 10 years in that voyage You have lost so many things Wealth and riches shall be in his house And in spite of it his righteousness endures The Bible says that man is blessed He fears the Lord and he delights greatly in his commands His seed, his seed yes not just his children Your seed is anything that comes out of you that his seed shall be mighty upon earth and then he says the generation of the upright shall be blessed wealth and riches shall be in his house and then he says his righteousness endures forever i have taught extensively on the systems of the kingdom that are allocated to bring supplies and to help believers to come into a point where we experience the abundance that gives us the time and the convenience to serve God. Are we together now? Uh, I've said it again that most of the issue when it has to do with the supplies of the kingdom, wealth, riches and abundance is that number one, most people approach it from a carnal and ungodly perspective. It's, it's from a standpoint of loss. So the entire exegesis around the subject of wealth is coming from a heart that is already depraved. It's not a heart that truly wants to honor God. It's just a heart that wants to grab and get. And so it's largely a marketing of lust. But that's not the way of God. Number two is that there is, as I will always say, an imbalance in the communication of the precepts that leads to it. So we have preachers who communicate their ideas on what they believe is the kingdom system allocated, the economic system of the kingdom. And they give the best that they can communicate. 
and then you find out largely that for many of those teachings the members don't prosper from it it is usually the preachers that prosper from it because the members appreciate the preachers for teaching them but they go back and since they themselves don't have congregations to appreciate them there is nothing for them to return home with and they are angry and frustrated and then they now begin to write all kinds of devilish things about the gospel and about men and women of God. And then we have on the other side entrepreneurs and business people and all kinds of people who bring all kinds of ideas about wealth. And that is wonderful and well-meaning. But some of these things are a mix of, of Scientology and some of it is even a mix of all kinds of ancient religions and things that reduce God to become energy and just reduces God to become a force just like many other forces. So by the time you dwell and explore those things, your conclusion about God would just be that God is some kind of sovereign energy in the cosmos who can do something to your brain and so on and so forth. So there is largely an imbalance. My question tonight is what is truly the way to accessing the supplies of heaven? Is God so wicked, my brothers and my sisters, that He will leave us in the dark and watch us move in pain and in the financial squalor that continues to press people down to a point where there is not enough even for our children? He says, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. If you be evil, in the depravity of your heart, yet you can create space for compassion. To be able to look at your child and bless your child. Let me give you a guarantee. I promise you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you listen to me, you will never, never be poor. If you listen to me, you will never be small. It's a guarantee I give you in the name of the Lord. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but it's true. Just pay attention to this thing. Don't, don't... Don't tamper with the equation when you don't have results. Get results first, then you can say, oh, you are wrong, I discovered another route. This teaching is a symbol of God's mercy because there is a tsunami coming. It has started. It's sweeping everywhere and everything close to it. And it's unfortunate that there are many believers that might be victims of this. That we will never get to a point where we begin to eat our children. Do you know women ate their children in the Bible? To eat your children now doesn't mean to eat your child physically. That you can mortgage the future and the destiny of your child so that you satisfy your hunger of today. You have eaten your child. Many of our parents ate our destinies. Let me tell you the truth. They ate our destinies in selfishness. There are many people today in marriages they should not be. But the parents say you must enter so that we will eat. That's eating your child. There are many people who should not be involved in certain things at all. There are many pastors who should be in the field serving the Lord. They are somewhere roaming around forcing supplies to come from where it's not found. I will never serve Satan to feed my stomach. I will never serve Babylon to feed my stomach. It's a vow that you must make that my entire life will be spent serving the purposes of the kingdom. I will never serve the Lord and quote scriptures and fall down under the anointing only to stand up and become a victim of a system that will define for me how much time and space I give God. I'm not going to be talking so much about the spiritual principles we understand. I just want to pick one of the subjects that the Lord put in my heart and drum it into us. And then we are going to pray. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
increase in the kingdom increase in the kingdom increase in this kingdom is a product of value write it down increase in the kingdom the greatest gift that can happen to a man is to be shown the systems and the ways that construct your life to become valuable please listen very carefully the law of value your value defines your degree of usefulness please write it down your value defines your degree of usefulness the degree to which you are needed within a civilization within a sociological context the degree of your usefulness not just your uniqueness not just your skill you can have skill that is not useful to the context of a civilization the degree of your usefulness is what we call your value and God so designed that the supplies of heaven are routed listen carefully the supplies of heaven are routed through the medium of value that when God wants a believer and one who is a citizen in the kingdom to rise to a point where you begin to access the riches and the blessings of heaven he does not just favor you as it were with giving you money but he brings you to a pedestal in life where it becomes impossible to ignore you are we together now there are many ways he achieves that but that the gateway into accessing the supplies of heaven experientially is becoming valuable now but most people most of the teachings on value does not capture the full import of what makes it rewardable it's not enough to know that your value is a measure of your usefulness just because you have something that is useful to me does not mean you will be rewarded for it there are many people carrying useful things but are not rewarded for it they are valuable yet they are not rewarded is that true so what is the system that translates your value to compel the environment that you live in to come gentiles coming to your light and then they are kings to the brightness of your rising get this tonight and you will thank me tomorrow i've taught you here that your value decides who pursues you it's true your value decides who pursues you you know you are valuable by the extent of demand that is placed on your grace on your skill on whatever it is that you represent now most believers will frown at what i'm saying that's why they are poor that's why they struggle we pray and that's very important we study the word we are faithful in church but we do not understand the systems allocated to bring us out of this quallow of hardship many of the things we try to address are symptoms of one central deficiency value in the area where value plays nothing will cover for it are we together now so your value is a reflection of the extent of your usefulness and i've taught you also that who pursues you determines the magnitude of your reward it is not just because people are pursuing you the quality of people pursuing you is also the quality of the reward that accrues to you if a president needs you you will be rewarded at the level and at the stature of a president is that true yes how can i call on your name and end up in shame No way 
How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God, the ever present help in time of need. that when you become valuable you will command dominion in a way and manner that will not only bring God glory it will bring glory to you it will bring glory to your family you will bring beauty and glory out of your life when you become valuable beg at a level where your usefulness cannot be ignored Beg at a level where every other factor to downplay your usefulness becomes inconsequential. That you rise to a point where not gender, not geographic limitations, cultural barriers, etc. That none of these things sustain the ability to be reason enough for men to ignore you. That's value. Value is not that you have something that is, is being biased by loyalty. So I have something that only my tribes people patronize. And they are only doing that just because they had that my name reflects that. And they, oh, you are from this state. And okay, let's come and buy this. No, when you sustain an ability and you peg yourself at a pedestal in life, where regardless of what else is not important in your life, people ignore it because of the necessity of what you carry. You are valuable. It was said about Jesus, all men seek for you. Not some. Not Yoruba people seeking for a Yoruba man. Not Igbo people seeking for an Igbo man. Not Northern people seeking for a Northern man. This is largely what we call value in our world. So if I have value now, I just quickly go and look for my people and say, I'm the son of the soil. Your boy has come with this if you leave me like that. And so we have a crowd of people. It is it's largely just ethnocultural. But that God puts something in your life, my brothers and my sisters, that will cause all men, regardless of value, nobody will ever ask you where you come from. They don't care whether you are male or female. Nobody cares whether this water was made by a male hand or a female hand. Nobody cares whether once you are thirsty to the point of death, you say, let me have that water. Whether it was made by a child or an adult. The moment people create certain factors to demean you, you are not valuable enough. If any other excuse is worthy enough to frustrate you, then you are not valuable. If you listen to what I am telling you, your children will bless you tomorrow. Years ago, the Holy Spirit would tell me, pay attention and let me make you valuable. I didn't understand the extent of what he was saying. Oh, today I'm grateful. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. Let me repeat. There is no magic that is going to happen in your finances. If you do not trust God, to take you to a point where you become extremely valuable I give you a guarantee in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God as far as accessing supplies by yourself here on earth is concerned you will live a frustrated life it's a matter of time and I'm not talking of business here or a job here <clears throat> leave all those things first you see it is your value that gives life to those things. They don't give life to you.
many have not been taught that part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives is not just to help us know God it's not just to help us walk in character the Holy Ghost upgrades men he came into our life to build us to a point where we become valuable the Bible says Jesus increased in wisdom listen carefully Jesus increased in stature Jesus increased in favor with God and with men the Holy Ghost does not come into the lives of people and then reduces them to a point where the only thing useful about them is their knowledge of God no sir is God speaking to us tonight value when your world comes to you they watch to see what it is that you have in your hands that you are going to exchange for the reward they have you are valuable when no amount becomes regrettable to commit to you when no amount becomes that means nobody would drop something and turn back and say i was stupid for dropping one million i just came i know pastor Alpha is anointed but ah, ah, one million what entered me no when nothing in this world becomes worthy enough to reward what you carry you are valuable with beyond imagination and this is where god is taking us to because let me tell you if you have that even if you are inside a hole i guarantee you you will not beg for bread i hope god is speaking to you you see i love you that's why i'm telling you this the devil will tell you don't mind him then make sure you don't have children make sure that you you, you are not the one who will be taking care of your relatives. Do you know how many well-meaning believers who love God are still asking God questions here today? Lord, this is unfair. My father was a pastor. My mother was a pastor. I'm a preacher. I love you with all my heart. What is all this one that I'm seeing now? 90% of the discussion in homes is money. Finance. Madam, what are you bringing? You are hiding money from me. The man says, you, are, you, are, you know, and all kinds of things. And God is watching. He's saying this time is supposed to be prayer time. Have you seen families doing devotion in the morning? And the father stops. Say, what, what devotion are you doing? And he picks a scripture by himself. Just because he wants to quarrel somebody who is not bringing resources. And devotion that is supposed to be a time of love and fellowship ends up becoming quarrel. A lot of people accuse pastors who steal church money. And you see, the truth is that except God shows you the way out, otherwise this thing will press you one day, you will touch what you should not touch. Hello? Please talk to me. Don't trivialize what pressure can do in the life of a man. When you are pressured to a point where you are pushed to the wall, you will be surprised at the compromises you will be able to make. We are losing believers per second per second because of poverty and what it can bring. Did you know someone sent me a text one time and told me that the, whether they wanted to give the person a job God is my witness but that the person who was helping to facilitate it said they have to pay 250,000 naira before they will get the job I said so do you have the money he said no she was whether I think it was a she coming to just say if I can if God can use me I said no God doesn't use me for those kind of things God does not use me for those kinds of things now it's easy to criticize them and say you mean you love God and you are doing that until you find out that a family of 10 people is depending on one person's pocket to eat it's a cause it's not the will of god imagine for instance that i tell them to give me a bucket now and while i'm preaching i just i just say if the bucket comes close to you there's something written on the bucket just read it and do whatever it says look at how your mind everything i'm saying will just go down because i'm passing a bucket you look at the bucket and look at what is written on it and just shut down and say what is all this again but do you not know that it is capital intensive to lift up the name of jesus the name of jesus is heavy it takes resources to lift it up did you hear what i said the name of jesus is not a feather you throw it's heavy 
it will take the shoulder of priests to take it up. It's easy to accuse men of God around. Oh, I like koinonia. They don't ask us to give anything. We just come and enjoy. We enjoy free dinner and they pay money. And we, I like this kind of ministry. Other pastors should be like that. Uh -uh. Don't be quick to criticize my brothers and my sisters. If God does not show you the key to this gate, you will stand there and almost die. <laughs> We raise your banner high We shine your light so bright We sing in honor of you You will never walk in integrity If you don't have supplies I guarantee you in the name of the Lord You will never Walk in integrity Life will push you to a point Where you must compromise You will preach something you didn't preach 10 years ago Because you have found out that in that message Now can come a way of helping your belly Value Now but you see the value, listen carefully my brothers and my sisters Just being valuable Is not enough You must ensure That that value Is needed and useful Within the context of your civilization This is as simple as it is That your value Must be needed Listen Pastor, come. Let's assume you are selling this and I don't need it. Now I'm passing, you have this. I'm just giving an example. Yet I don't need it. Will I reward you? Are you valuable? Is your value useful to me? No. Do I need it? No. So you will still suffer. Although you are valuable That's what is happening to many of us There is almost nobody here that I know Who has not recognized something that is valuable And just because we found it We start rejoicing And we believe life should just come and bless us No sir There is a standard that demands reward Because the me who is moving around Me too I am looking for something With my resources And until I find the person with that something To the standard I consider rewardable That is the only condition for releasing things It's not enough to be valuable Your value must first be needed and useful Second, your value must be translated to a form Where it is served with excellence Excellence that relates to every level of mental development did you hear what I just said? That your value must be translated to products and services that are served with excellence. An excellence that can be able to be satisfying to any kind of level. That means that the value you provide and the excellence attached to it may only be able to serve people who are middle class. That level of excellence may not suffice for the great who do not think price. Are we together now? So there are many of us who are doing things. But that what we are doing, I give you an instance. Our daddy is a prof here. Are we together now? Now if you are a graduate, they are not going to call you to go and head an institute of something with all kinds of benefits accruing to it because you are a graduate but not graduate enough you have not graduated enough to sit there so the problem is not that you are not a graduate but you are not graduate enough the question there is enough to the standard are we together now the person who takes last in a race I hope you know he has a time too that he finished But he did not finish at enough time To get the gold medal 
The question is not that they finish. The question is there is a time allocated. And whoever can beat the time is the one who gets the goal. So it's not enough to say you are valuable. As a man of God, let me come back to ministry because many of you as and leave all those things. Let's talk ministry. So let me talk ministry. As a man of God, it's not enough to be called. You can be called. You can feel anointed. In fact, quite honestly, you can be anointed. But is it to the level that can bless the people who God told to bless you? Because for every destiny helper, there is a standard of grace that compels his resources to answer to you. God can tell me, or God would have put in my spirit to give Pastor Alpha a car, provided he heals my mad child. Are we together? Provided he does what? Not provided he prays in my house. The condition for that reward is that whoever can come with the level of grace that can take away madness in that house. So I'm anointed. I know scriptures. And I come to the house. And I roam around and I just pray. And at the end of it, they just thank me. They put malt in a bottle with straw. And they put donuts. And they escort me with it outside. And I go. It's not that God did not send them. Your level of value did not make it fair for that answer to come to you. That means when I sit in a meeting and grace is coming on me, God is lifting me to the standard that can match the helpers so that their resources can now come to me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Listen very carefully. Everybody who will bless you tomorrow is already alive today. Your level of grace has not risen enough to call them. That's why they are shifted to your tomorrow. If you enter that level of grace today, they will come today. I look at my life today and I see what people do to me. And I'm almost tempted to ask, where were you? Where were you when I was sucking ginger inside a straw? And I was a believer. Are we together? When I was trekking to First Bank without money in my account by faith, hoping that I would get miracle alert. Now you are receiving it free. It's just coming. There was a price. God has authorized Pastor Alpha. This is your prayer request for the next level. But your value is here. It cannot match. Until you are lifted to the level that matches. And so the Holy Spirit has the responsibility of upgrading the saints. Please listen carefully. Upgrading the saints to a level where their usefulness becomes worthy of being rewarded by any standard are we together now that means pastor alpha gets to a point where someone will sit down and think with his wife and the lord will say kai build one of my servants a house why don't they think about you because they don't think it's fair to give you that kind of house now remember they know you are called but they think it's unfair. They believe that there are more rewarding ministers in terms of impact, kingdom impact. And the Spirit of God by Himself will take their minds to those people and say, that's the man you should bless. Please believe what I'm telling you. Yes. We've had people, my brothers and my sisters, I, I say this to the glory of God. We've had people live and travel from other nations and other cities to Koinonia, not for the program travel with seeds and they said they sat down and agreed either as a business enterprise and say no since we love god and before we started this business we agreed that god should grant us grace so that we'll bless others and they leave their cities take flights go through the rigor of coming to zaria and all they are coming to do is apostle we want to sow into koinonia and we want to continue and you ask them why and the man will say i listen to one message say value not message say value 
But that value had grace and content in it to rise to a level where it can smash the devil worrying that man. So the man listened to a message. And as he listened to the message, he fell asleep. And in that sleep, the message continued. And Jesus stepped in. The Jesus he fasted for two months to see, he didn't see. But he listened to one message and climbed the ladder of a grace straight into an encounter. He would look for that person and reward him. That was why Nicodemus looked for Jesus even in the night. He traced him. The Bible doesn't tell us everything that happened there, but I'm convinced he came with honorarium. It's just my thinking. It's just my simple thinking. Forgive me if I sound arrogant, but there are some of you as you are seated right now, there are all kinds of envelopes in your pocket. You are waiting for us to share the grace. So you will queue and spend time only to come and sow into my life. Now, I'm sorry that I'm the one saying this and I'm not by any way manipulating you. What is the truth? Now, you are thinking, how will somebody stand for hours just to drop a seed to a man? Whereas you beg the same person while he was on the queue and he didn't give you transport fare. Are you seeing how it is? There is no reward until your value rises to a point where it can be served with excellence. As a man of God, nobody will place a demand on your grace just because you are prayerful and just because you study. The truths that you communicate, must the impact of that word must be felt in the lives of the people. When it is done, clear the way for the rewards that will come. Now, you don't preach because of money, don't get me wrong. However, it is impossible, my brothers and my sisters, to be valuable, to serve that value with excellence. Whether you sell it or give it free, you must be rewarded. It's a law. By the grace of God and the privilege of God's hand, God has granted me the opportunity to raise too many people around this nation and around the world for me to beg for bread. My children will never beg for bread, even if I give back to them and go to be with the Lord. Because people have been raised. And wisdom is justified by her children. Your value has not raised anyone, yet you want life to reward you. You see how unfair it is? Just because you think you are a graduate holding a certificate, does not mean that what have you given to the world that you demand value from. It's amazing! How your relatives will not give you money, but they will run for a meeting and kneel down waiting for a man of God to pass so they will drop money. You beg them for rent, they didn't give you. Yet they are carrying four times that amount to give someone who is already blessed. Nobody really blesses a needy person. They bless valuable people. You must translate yourself from this needy mentality to a mentality of value. That even if you don't have money in your pocket, you can say in the name of Jesus, I'm coming for koinonia. There is an anointing that is coming. I'm not falling for nothing. Every time I fall, I rise upgraded in the spirit. And a day will come, I will put something in the realm of the spirit that will cause the nations to place a demand on my grace. Jesus climbed up the mountain and people followed him up the mountain to the point that his influence threatened the scribes and the Pharisees. They said, no, this guy is stealing the show. If we don't do something about him, he will destroy us. Koinonia, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you are gathered here every week by the grace of God because we continue to strive to communicate truths to you that are applicable to every facet of your life. It's a formula that is unbendable. You would hear testimonies here. You would hear testimonies every week that the word produces results. Nobody leaves what works. Did you hear what I'm saying? Nobody leaves what works. No, sir. The world does not have too many things that are working. So the options are few. There are not too many things working in this life. So when you find what works, you stay. And pay whatever price it takes to stay. 
that's why the presence of God is 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 a is a place and a zone you must desire and hunger for forever. Because you see, the presence of God does not just make you heaven bound; it makes you valuable. It truly does. Look at my life. The presence of God. That's where you find the anointing. So while I'm worshiping in His presence, I love, I love. I love your presence I love, I love You think I'm just wasting time singing But while I'm singing and worshipping in His presence There is an elevation in the spirit A new anointing Son, you have this anointing and that But you don't have this one Let me introduce this in your life And I'm there just worshipping the same way you are typing the letter in your office. Me too, I'm, 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 I'm doing all of that. The same way you are reading for a promotion exam. And all of a sudden, I step out and I see a grace that was not upon me yesterday. Now the grace has come. Meaning the person who will not bless me yesterday can now bless me. Because there is a grace that can now add him to the list of the blessings. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love you, Jesus. I love, I love. Shalabakato Salada. I love your presence. I love, I love. Listen. Forget about bringing a valuable person down. You don't know how needy this world is until they find true value. All this issue of trying to bring people down is a joke. When you find especially value that is stamped with the hand of God, only God can bring that person down. I'm telling you this. Koinonia will continue to grow from glory to glory. It's not just some recitation. The formula has been given. The scroll is not closed. The seals have been broken. It's been opened. We have seen it with our eyes. The things men do not have. How could they resist it? An anointing is not stored in the market. An anointing is not stored in a bank. The government does not have it. So how dare you trivialize the power of God upon the hand of upon the life of a man? And then assume it's not there. Your need will force you to remember that only the anointing can solve it. Listen, you are seated now in this place. To some of you, you are attending a service. I wish you could see in the realm of the spirit that you are climbing ladders. Some of you traveled from far. You just thought you came for a service until you go back on Sunday on your little prayer group and you say, let us pray fire. And you see fire everywhere to an extent that you say, what is this? What is going on here? And everybody descends. They will stop calling you brother immediately. They, they will have to invent a name to show you you have risen in the spirit. Let me tell you this. It's good to know how to cook. It's good to know how to do business. But my brothers and my sisters, be anointed. This is real value. Be anointed. Have something upon you that no man can buy. The same way you can do nothing against the truth. But for the truth. He said, Thou anointest my head. Give us that scripture. You did not anoint my cup. The goal is for my cup to run over. But the oil came on my head. And the result showed in my cup. It takes more than a good profession to prosper. It takes more than a good skill to prosper. There is only so much reward you can get from that angle. Ah! 
but when his hand comes upon you blessed is the man that my God finds and puts grace upon you your life will be a wonder you will you will walk upon gold as dust I'm telling you this listen let me tell you all these money money things you see people chase around most people don't have any money they just have enough to solve their basic needs so they look rich they are poor and yet that's what distracts a lot of people but when you stand say lord put something in my life put something upon me i i, I don't know why people don't pray that prayer oh. God shorten my journey I don't have time shorten my journey let there be an anointing on my profession listen 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 come Emeka you are a doctor come watch this we are going to pray this gentleman is a doctor when someone is sick they will meet you for injection or meet you for whatever now your profession does not determine who you bless the anointing on your profession will make a rich man come as your patient you see now that one is not mbbs again that one is the anointing influencing your possibilities so a day that no doctor is around the billionaire comes and the holy ghost not your profession pushes you there you have a restaurant you are a chef congratulations but not being anointed you will continue to cook for poor people for wherever they will finish eating and then back then and say i don't have 10 naira i don't have 15 naira but when the anointing comes upon it the anointing will make you go to visit your auntie just when a politician is there and he says i'm looking for someone there is a meeting and he says ah my daughter is here that one is no longer your skill that one is a grace from heaven that comes upon them listen you can be a preacher and have a good understanding of scripture mighty exegesis of scripture and they keep inviting you to different places wonderful you will be blessed but the eye of your helpers will never meet you until there is a grace that grace is what will take your seed your message whatever you represent to the ears of the man that can announce your ministry how would I have risen from Zaria here? How many public address structures do you have? I'm not on Facebook. I'm not on any social media as a person. It's not everything that is just good preaching. It's not everything that is just speaking. There is an anointing that announces. It's called an oil of gladness. It can take men and make you above your fellows. Please listen. The financial tsunami that is coming to destroy men, a time will come where you will see people. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, a sadist, but a time will come where everything you have, every other person has it. You are educated, you are educated. And then the other person contending with you is a tribesman of the director. What then is your advantage? There are things when you have, only the rich look for you. There are things when you have, only the poor look for you. There are things when you have, only sick people look for you. There are things you have, only those in need of legal issues look for you. There are things when you have, only hungry people look for you. But there are things when you have, all men will seek for you. All men. All men. God designed it that way. So when Jesus was about to start his ministry, having done everything he did, the Bible says he went to the wilderness and cried there. 40 days, 40 nights fasting, and he returned in the power of the Spirit. And then Acts chapter 10 tells us how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all day that were oppressed. Something humorous happened today. I, I have never been to Shiloh as a person. And I was just sitting today 
and all of a sudden I got a text. The pastor in charge of registering pastors in Shiloh sent a text to my phone and said, Man of God, are you coming? We want to arrange your reservations and this. I said, What is this? Now listen, I'm just saying it to encourage you. I don't know that man from Adam. Are we together now? Yet, there is somebody who will not stay in the secret place but will keep lobbying. You will go there and be roaming around the gate like a thief. They will say, please join the members or sit in the overflow. Listen, once you are struggling to be accepted in a realm and they are rejecting you, it's a sign that the anointing has not opened the door. Go back. Don't force yourself. Just go back. When you try to enter as a pastor, you see other pastors and you are fighting for acceptance and they are saying, Mr. Man, we invited AB, not you. We'll consider you one day. Stop making a mockery of your Yourself. Go back to the secret place and say, where is the God that puts oil on the head of men? Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when what comes upon great men comes upon you, there is no door that will remain closed. Thou anointest my head with oil. Is someone ready to pray tonight? This is the value that I brought for you. That if you, if God grants you access to the anointing, and you can serve that anointing with excellence, there is no door. Listen, you don't have to leave your profession. It just needs to be anointed. Many of us are educated, but our certificates are not anointed. Many of us are skilled, but your skill needs to be anointed. I'd like you to find a corner our time is gone for the next five or ten minutes worship team just set the atmosphere for us find a place and blast in tongues and pray in the spirit and cry to god and say lord you are the giver of all good things you don't win all good things upon my life let an anointing upon my head that will answer to the needs of kings that will answer to the needs of nobles bless an anointing upon my degree bless an anointing upon my masters bless an anointing upon my PhD of God bless an anointing upon my profession I am a lawyer but only an educated one can you put an anointing upon my legal practice your usefulness amplified by the presence of the anointing Worshippers pray, Lord I can sing, I have written songs, but let an anointing come upon my song for God. Lord, I'm a businessman. It is true that I've paid my price. Doing well, learning the principles.
Hallelujah. I like you to mention whatever it is that you do, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, and say, Lord, let your anointing and your fire come upon it, and let there be an explosion from the left to the right. Lift your voice and pray. If you are in ministry, pray over the work God has put in your hands. Lord, it's time to take the power, the glory of God to the nation. It's time for the gates of ministry to be open for the sake of the gospel. As a businessman, it's time to rob mine with the grace. Lift me by your anointing, O oh God. Your certificate can give you a shock. It will take the anointing to to pray a serious prayer. Lord, by the anointing on my life, take away poverty and hardship. Lift your voice and pray. If there is an anointing on my life, then there is a demand for it. Let the anointing on my life roll away financial reproach. Let the anointing upon my life activate divine supply. By the ministry of destiny, that is the privilege for them to arise and answer to the cause of my Pray, God will answer, I tell you. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me, we are praying. There is an anointing that works like perfume. Isaac used it and said, My son is like a field. I place something upon my son that makes him to begin to smell like a field that the Lord has blessed. That means you pass and that aura attracts you. Have you seen people you just like? And honestly, there is nothing. There is no reason. You just look at them and you go out of your way to ask questions. What are you doing in Zaria? I just came. Do you have a place to stay? And you too, you are wondering the smell. When the woman broke the alabaster box, the Bible says the perfume filled the room. There is, there is this plant they call Queen of the Night. That's the name I think. Is that true? And once it's night, when other plants are sleeping, that plant just takes over the entire atmosphere. The anointing is smellable. You can be within a vicinity and the spirit of someone begins to know, ah, this man is here. Let me go and see this person. Say, I knew it. I knew you were there. Hold on, wait for me. And the person will go and bring something. I like you to pray the fragrance of your glory. Lord, let it smell my life. That as I walk, my life becomes a walking miracle.
Hallelujah. We are going to pray two more prayer points. I'd like you to cry and say, Lord, I am the one who will break the cycle of hardship in my entire lineage. There are many of us here. Listen, listen. Let me tell you the truth. You will be a wicked person if you don't think of your children. The power of God is here. I sense a strong anointing. I'd like you to pray that the grace upon your life will cross hardship once and for all over your family. Lift your voice and pray. anointed from the womb listen until that time they never named anybody John so they wanted to give him a name an identity like what was the status quo but when the angel came you see that Zechariah wanted to corrupt the destiny of someone who was going to be the greatest of all prophets according to the mouth of the Lord and the, the father's mouth was shut so that the destiny be preserved. Listen, when you do uncommon things, uncommon men come to you. When you do common things, common men come to you. You are going to pray, Lord, anoint me for unusual things, unusual dimensions, unusual ministry, unusual business, unusual medical practice. It has to be unusual. No table, they said, that a notable miracle that happened. Lift your voice, Lord, an unusual prophet, an unusual apostle, an unusual evangelist, an unusual. An unusual chef. Come on, pray. An unusual IT comforter. An unusual doctor. An unusual professor. Unusual dimensions of the workings of the spirit. Unusual dimensions. Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this. I shared with you years ago that a man of God was praying for me, and that man said something that disturbed me. I went to sow a seed to him, and he said, Oh Lord, create a problem that only him can solve. I, I, I thought that was selfish. When you talk of kingdom, kingdom is not a thing of competition and the rest. But he said he has prayed his prayer, whether I believe it or not. It was later as I began to grow that I understood that, ah, he was not being selfish. He was just saying, not distinguishing. Put him in a level. Let me tell you, 
Rehoboth means God has given me my space. There is your space in life. That you think a well they can come and close it. But there is a space in ministry. There is a space in business. You are going to pray one prayer. Lord, allocate my space and keep me there. A space that is beyond competition. Beyond contention. There are names that when you call on earth, there is no basis for comparing them. There are names when you call in ministry, in business, in family life. They are outstanding. They are in a class of their own. Your father God is in a class of his own. Cannot be compared with any other God. I met I just returned from a trip and I met a particular music minister and he came to me and hugged me I said oh I've been blessed by your songs I'm happy to see you now and he looked at me he said apostle this is not the first time you're meeting me I said, really? He said, in 2012, I was in a meeting. I was nobody. You called me out and prophesied to me. And I said, I did? He said, yes. That you prophesied to me that the wells of worship, the fountain, will begin to rise. And that from that time, his life had moved forward. And while we were in the meeting, the Lord spoke to, me, to him again and I told him, I said, you are going to write just one song, one, that will surpass what your songs have done again. It doesn't take too many things to lift you. Just one noise by the hand of God. There was one earthquake. Bam! What did Ben Carson do to be great? Just one surgery, and that was it. When you call all the music ministers in this nation, it's usually one song. Many songs they wrote, but one song. Bishop T.D. Jakes wrote one book, Woman Thou Art Loose, till today. No other book has brought him that kind of reward. Dr. Mas Munro had written so many books, bestsellers. But when he wrote Rediscovering the Kingdom, that one book was a game changer. Please, can we borrow one more minute and say, Lord, what is the one thing that will announce me by your grace? Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, what is the one song? Lord, as a man of God, what is the one meeting? The one meeting that will announce my grace. As a doctor, who is the one patient that I will treat and get out of poverty forever? One thing is needful. One thing, one thing. Pray, Koinonia. There is a God that answers. One encounter when he is out with Jesus changes his life. One encounter with every cool man changes his life. One encounter while still praying. Lord, what is the one thing, the one dimension? Who do I need to prophesy to for my life to change? Whose body must be healed through my hands? What is the one meeting that will announce your grace upon my life? What is that one publication that the nations will hear? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I think it was last year, last year or early this year, I had the privilege of flying with Professor Wole Soinka. And when I got into the aircraft, he was sitting on my seat. And I looked at him. I was standing face to face with a Nobel laureate. Very simple looking. 
and I thought about this thing again. It's not many things that lift people. They wanted to walk him so that I said, no, 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 you can't do that. This is a great man. I use it as an opportunity to practice the law of honor. Say, please keep him there. Just find whatever seat for me and let me sit. Why will I walk him up? Whereas I aspire that the world hear God's voice through me too. One thing. Have you not seen that great men are only lifted by one thing? If David didn't kill Goliath, he will continue to eat sheep meat till he dies there in the wilderness. The head of Goliath brought him a wife. The head of Goliath made him and his family tax free. The head of Goliath made him a king. One thing. One thing Jesus did die on the cross and he resurrected and was enthroned as king. Listen, I know our time is gone, but you are going to cry this one thing. Listen, for some of you, it may not be one thing, it may be one encounter with one person. We have a number of our worshippers here. This young man, Gashina, where is he? He's praying. This gentleman. It was one of his songs, just one of his songs that Nathaniel Bassi received. One of his songs. And this song just exploded this gentleman's ministry. Hallelujah. Sometimes you just need one encounter. I'm saying this to you. I've shared with you my experience with Jesus. It's not that I was not doing, I was not doing bad. I was already working in a measure of signs and wonders and this. But one solid encounter. Not this nonsense around that people say encounter with no proofs. Solid encounter where you meet the power of God. Apostle Babalola was roaming around in the forest when fire fell on his head from that forest. One encounter and changed his life. Archbishop Benson Idahosa, it was one encounter that turned his life and announced him. Bishop Oyedeko, one encounter, an 18 hour vision changed his life. Papa Iya Deboye, one encounter turned his life around. You don't need 10. Lord, what is the encounter? What is the idea? What is the song? Release it, cry, and say, Release it. Call on to me and I will answer. One encounter with the healing anointing will take you beyond the shores of this nation. One encounter with the prophetic grace will open you up to dimension. One conference that God will grant you access to rise to will lift you and take you high. and I pray for you in the name of Jesus the fire that was fall on your life to shift you to the next level I stretch my hands receive that fire from heaven now in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare where your reward system has become limited may you be upgraded to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ Listen, I speak to you. If you are in ministry here, I stretch my hand. I'm telling you, it's time for men of fire to arise. This lukewarm, talkative thing around will continue to mock us. We need people that know God and can prove His power and His grace. This is what will change the society. All this grammar up and down will not do much. You need to bring God to. The Bible says the Word became flesh. I speak to you the kind of encounters that must put fire in your spirit. May that fire fall on you in the name of Jesus. Any man of 
God here, any minister of the gospel here, and those following online, you have been bent at a level of result. Only certain miracles happen. Only certain results happen. In the name of Jesus, enter a new dimension. A new dimension in the spirit. I pray for you in the name of Jesus the orchestrations that must make you collide with the doors of the next season of your life we declare by the spirit of wisdom may God coordinate those orchestrations and make them happen for you in the name of Jesus listen for some of you, this grace will start waking you up in the night. You will be surprised that at specific times, sleep will leave you. Not forever, but for a period of time. Because it is through those prayer times that a solid encounter, that's when you will see a real angel for the first time. Not, not lying and saying this and that. No. Daniel was praying after 21 days an angel came there are some of you by reason of that prayer God will lead you to certain bookshops you will see an old book that was written by one general nobody knew you will buy that book and sit down and that's when the fire of your destiny will come upon you value encounters don't trivialize them Encounters are, are the things that create conviction. This our generation doesn't have conviction at all. We just say everything and don't believe it. He said that which our eyes have seen, that which our ears have heard, that which our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that's what we preach. I pray for you encounters with Jesus there are some of you here I speak in the name of Jesus may the king of kings himself visibly walk to your rooms in the name of Jesus may God open you up to this encounter you will start having supernatural encounters encounters with the angelic encounters with the spirits of just men encounters with Jesus himself in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. For as long as we continue to fool ourselves that our finances are at the mercy of a lot of mundane things, the ease factor is the anointing. The ease factor is the anointing. When all is said and done, please get solid power in your life. Doesn't matter whether you are called into ministry or not. I was in a meeting about a week or so ago, and one of the gospel ministers, people were ministering, and quite honestly, I was blessed. Nothing spectacular. But one of the gospel ministers came up and my God, for just 10 minutes, that gentleman has been a long time, long time since I sat down under that corporate, that intense presence. Long time, corporately, like in a meeting. Ah, I looked at him. I said, I know why now. I know why. This gentleman paid his price. When you hold this thing, it shows. It shows. You don't carry the anointing. You only carry it so that it will carry you. It's the anointing that carries you. May God anoint you. May God anoint you. May God anoint you. May God really anoint you. And may that anointing speak in your life. May it open doors of abundance. May that anointing open the hearts of men towards you. May it compel men to bring the resources of heaven to you. In the name of Jesus.
Wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45, 8. Can we have that media? Otherwise, you turn to your Bible. Just help those under the anointing. Isaiah 45 and verse 8. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope that you can read it. Let's read together. One, two, read. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies fall down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, like you to decree and declare over your earth and over your heavens command them to open the bible says there are treasures that are hidden there lift your voice and pray chapter 1 verse 1 Ezekiel 1 verse 1 please pay attention to tonight's teaching we are going to pray I want to share with you something very powerful the mystery of open heavens one of the greatest prayer requests that you will have to offer before God in this season is oh God give me the gift of an eye that can see it's a powerful prayer are we together yes in the physical when people are blind you see the limitations that come with their lives the gift of an open eye that God can grant you access to see beyond the realms of the physical to see dimensions that are not given for mortals to see it's a superior advantage that will establish your dominion on this earth now it came to pass in the 13th year in the fourth month in the fifth day of the month i was among the captives by the river of sheba that the heavens were open and I saw the visions of God that the heavens were opened and I saw the visions of God let me start tonight by saying God is building us in the similitude of a spiritual house the bible says and ye all as living stones it says we are being built into a spiritual house don't let the devil distract you please listen when you see the way a house is built there are times in that building where the carpenter is not needed there are times in that building where there's no need to cast anything there are times when the entire masonry is over and you need to be involved in the interior. The Bible says we are built in that servitude. That means that there are seasons where the spirit of the living God will turn and begin to emphasize certain things. A season will come God's emphasis will be character and moral excellence. A season will come it will be your prosperity, your prayer life. 
you know you are being built into a house when the various dimensions are at least touched within a given period i command that spirit to leave that lady now in the name of jesus christ are we together now god no matter i hope you know that the way God deals with you for your spiritual growth and the way God deals with you to step into the office of your ministry are not the same. Now listen very carefully. When God is dealing with you with respect to his call and assignment to your life, he's not obliged to teach you everything. The curriculum of his dealing will only cover the areas that represent your assignment and is intentional. I've taught you on the mystery of the body of Christ. That bias and that lapse in knowledge is supposed to force you to need the corporate body because it is only in partnership with them that those gaps are completed. Are we together now? So if God is calling me into the healing ministry, for instance, He will seldom teach me anything about excellence and administration because there is another person in the body mandated to represent that dimension. So if at all I want to see God's hand in that dimension, it will have to be based on my alignment to that person whose office is carved out in that dimension. Are we together now? But my personal dealing that is for my spiritual growth, God makes it a point of duty that I am built so that I am balanced because this one is for my own benefit. So you find out that in a season God will deal with the issue of character. Then later on you will see him switch and talk about your finances. Even if you are fasting, the visions you will see will be respect with respect to what he is doing. And sometimes you can feel guilty and say, God, what is this? I, I need more fire. And yet all you see is God teaching you financial principles. And then a day will come, he will never talk about money with you again. Even if you've not paid your rent. You can go and pay about and pray about five issues. You'll be surprised that is the issue that is consistent with his intention for the season that looks like is the first to be answered. You pray about rent, you pray about food, you pray about your ministration. Only your ministration receives an answer. As if God did not see that the landlord harassed you. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. I'm teaching you something very powerful. When you understand this about God, then you can use the, His ability to touch the various areas to confirm whether you are still in sync with His dealing. As far as your personal growth is concerned, God will never stay in a single curriculum forever. It's impossible. So if all you think is happening is God is just building my life and he's not building my finances, he's not building character, he's not building the anointing, it may be that you have started skipping a lot of classes. Because the lecturer and the spirit will always be there, whether you attend the lecture or not, you will come and find him speaking. And it will be registered that according to this season in your life, you should have learned this truth. But by disalignment or pride or carelessness, you exempted yourself from that dimension. And as you begin to grow, the lopsidedness that came from your imbalance will become very glaring. And sometimes it can be so glaring it will affect the bigger assignment that has been given to you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. So a true apostolic and prophetic ministry must be able to capture the dimensions of God that create stability. God is not a wicked God. The Bible tells us how Jesus grew in wisdom. If the Bible just said Jesus grew, it will leave us in limbo as to what dimensions. But the Bible tells us the dimensions that were captured in his growth. He increased in wisdom, in stature, and then in favor with God and with men. And the Bible tells us these were the ingredients that were captured. The time came, having grown now in wisdom, stature, favor with God and with men, he now went to River Jordan, was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. The Holy Spirit comes upon him. And then Jesus is full, returns in the power of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to grow, remember the Bible says we should look to Jesus. 
not just to a man of God, not just to a denomination. We only look to men as they look to Christ. When we confirm that they are not looking at Christ, we are scripturally authorized to stop looking at them. Is God blessing us already? You will be a terrible man of God when you raise people and as they grow you see when a little child is crippled you will not see the effect until he becomes an adult that's when you will see how bad it was so there the, the certain imbalances some of us it may not show yet because we are growing but then when you now become a pastor with members and God gives you a thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand members and you see the effect of your personal bias rub off on a generation of people. I can hate prosperity because of an imbalance in the dealings of God and because of the level of the anointing you will see in my life you will believe that that's how God trains people and I will, I will um, indoctrinate you into hating it or I can love money and trivialize God trivialize prayer trivialize fellowship and because of the extent of the results you see in one area you will be convinced that it is a justification to ignore those other areas too now remember my teaching the full gospel the lamb's wife he says come and I will show you the lamb's wife he says he showed me a city that was equal in length, equal in breadth, equal in height. That's the last wife. Any dimension that is outside of that is not the lamb's wife. The lamb's wife is stable and balanced. Regardless of how you turn her, she has gained stability through knowledge. So I'm saying this so that you appreciate what it is that God is making of you. Listen, what you are becoming is no secret. God has already given us a picture. We are following a road map. The growth process is not a guesswork. Are we together now? There is a blueprint that is given. And if you are humble enough to submit to the dealings of the Spirit, as painful as it may sound sometimes, you trust God enough and follow with your childlike heart and watch the wonder that you begin to become. The same way you can tell a student who just got an MBBS admission and you say, just follow me, I'm your lecturer. I give you a guarantee that in six years you will be a doctor. And the naive young man or woman just says, well, I will follow. And they may be teaching a boring course and the person is saying, what is all this? Let's talk about something. And then by the time the doctor stands with a patient, he will begin to appreciate the relevance of the cause that he once said boring. Because he will see that that boring cause would now become a lifesaver to someone in the hospital. Remember that the goal of this system of teaching and mentorship is not for you to remain a member. God never raised the body to remain members. We are raised to become kingdom ambassadors. That means a time should come in your life when our gathering together should be to further fire ourselves and then we go back and begin to legislate on behalf of the kingdom. If this is not happening, we are wasting our time and we are wasting God's time. It's as simple as that. Are we together now? So you have to understand that the growth process that God is achieving in our lives is very exact. Let me remind us very quickly, number one, his first interest and in order of priority is your spiritual health. I can tell you that God desires that we become spiritually alive. The Bible says to be alive unto God. I've preached all kinds of messages along this line. I just need to remind us. He said, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things, although ye already know them and are established in this present truth. Your spiritual health. No matter what you have in life, if you do not know God, you are at a disadvantage. 
as mysterious as God is, He has created systems to help men know Him. This is this is one proof of His love. The Bible says, "Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom; let not the strong man glory in his strength; let not the rich man glory in his wealth or riches." He says, "But let him that glory and glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me." That means the pride, the zenith of your achievement as a believer is not just cars and houses and influence, etc. It is your knowledge, a sound settled not just the knowledge of God doctrinally but that experientially you can say I know whom I believe not just that I heard about him not just that I went to a Bible school where they taught about him I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded when you get to that level you are spiritual are we together now and then number two transformation that's one of the things that God seeks to achieve. The Bible calls it the renewal of the mind. In fact, it says in First Peter, I believe, chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, Receiving the end of your faith, the culmination, the perfection of your faith is the salvation of your soul. Are we together now? And the Bible says that we are transformed. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Let this mind, the word let here means permit. This is not my teaching tonight, but it's important that we are all on the same page. It says, permit this mind, this thinking, this paradigm, this plane of understanding to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That means it matters to God, it matters to His agenda, and should matter to you that you are transformed. And I discovered something of recent. The Holy Spirit has really been opening me to a lot of things. The Lord told me that the hallmark of transformation is not knowledge, it's love. You know you are truly transformed. Not just by the extent and the vastness of your spiritual knowledge. But you know you are transformed to the degree to which the love of Christ. Remember it says that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says the love of God. Not the love for God. Not just the love towards God. God has a dimension of love that he seeks to see expressed in every human being. And we have the different dimensions of love as human beings. But God is not satisfied. He wants to see His kind of love at work in you. And only when He sees that would He guarantee that you can represent Him. The Bible says that God is love. And it says whoever loves. It doesn't just mean whoever has a nice feeling towards another person. No. Whoever on earth can reflect love. That dimension must have been born of God. So the hallmark of your transformation is not just knowledge. You can be vast in knowledge and not love. And the truest proof of love for God is in your love for men. This is very simple but powerful. You are a hypocrite to believe you love God when you cannot love men. The Bible says it, that you cannot claim to love God whom you have not seen when it is difficult or impossible for you to love the men that you have seen. Do you know why? Because men are unlovable. There is a grace that helps you love men. When you know how wicked, how selfish, the, the versions of men that are on earth qualify that if you really love them, it has to be God's kind of love that can love like that. It is only the love of God that can be shared abroad like that towards men. With your human love, you have to love someone and hate the other. If you love people regardless of the way they are, then that's no longer human love. That love came from heaven. In every 24 hours, there's enough foolishness on earth to annoy you. And if your love remains the same, then it is not yours. It came from heaven. So the hallmark of transformation is not just knowledge. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love. Other versions say charity. It says I am nothing. Though I offer my body to be burnt. Though I understand all mysteries and all prophecies, and I have not love. He said I am only a clinging symbol. Then he says, love is patient, love is kind, love is humble. 
it hopes for all things believe all things endures all things and so on and so forth he says whether there be tongues they will end there be prophecies they will end are we together now love number three god wants you to excel in the area of your purpose your assignment and your destiny this is a recap that we must never get tired of we need to know where is god going with me what is he trying to achieve in my life you now sometimes we men of god just confuse people by making it look like it's an endless journey with no idea no there are very exact ideas the god of the bible does not leave men in confusion the pathway may not be known but he will always show you the destination are we together now yes your assignment and your destiny you are not useful to god and you are not useful to your generation if you do not leave out the fullness of god's intent for you the bible says lo i come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will there is an assigned portion of influence of impact to me and to you imagine if i did not obey god to have koinonia today imagine the lives that would be destroyed the same way there is a generation waiting for the dimension of god invested and committed to you and sometimes many people are fortunate to follow a path a career path that is in sync with their destiny this is the secret of chief excellence they find out that with little efforts they are excelling and they may not even know why it's because either by guidance or by the mercy of god they have found themselves along career paths that synchronize naturally with the assignment and the call and the purpose and the destiny for them you must find out what you are on earth for not everybody will be uniquely given an assignment like a pioneering assignment for many people their visions are in other people's visions not everyone you see so if if your assignment is in someone else's assignment there are certain details that would not need to be given to you you will only be guided and be, you will be given a heart that makes you loyal and you follow and then you will find your place there are people whose destiny and place and assignment is in koinonia but there are others who are going to be the ones to create the umbrella that others will come to be blessed in you will know it by the meticulousness of their training there are many things you can take for granted in your times of training and god will not disturb you because there is a cover and that cover will adjust and help but if you are going to pioneer any move of the spirit the strictness that will be added to your disciplines you will need mentorship to explain to you otherwise you will think god hates you five people will do something and god will not say anything you try the same thing and you will see what will happen you will have to pray for one or two weeks to understand god what is this it is about the assignment not the individual god wants us to excel the bible says that we are the light of the world we are a city that is set on a hill right that cannot be hidden he said neither do men light a lamp many believers look at these mysteries that jesus taught and think they are just simple things for children the more you know god and the more god gives you a mind that thinks you will appreciate the dealings of the lord just help those under the anointing outside there. are we together number four what does god want to see in your life a manifestation of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the christ a manifestation of the multifaceted possibilities a manifestation in your life now of the multifaceted possibilities that are resident in the christ the son of god god does not only seek my brothers and my sisters that we love god god does not only seek that we are transformed and have excellence in our lives god wants that our lives be a demonstration 
I think Galatians chapter 1 if I'm not mistaken and verse 29 I hope I'm right the Bible says and they glorify God in me that means you can see a man and that man becomes an effulgence of the possibilities he becomes a definition of something about God that you did not know so you see a dimension of the sheer power of God flow through a mortal man it's a message God is glorified by that manifestation you know that this gentleman or this woman could not have been born this way how would you know her name how would you declare and the power of God is lifting people God is really glorified when the saints can transfer the realities I call them the multifaceted possibilities it is with this dimension that we dumbfound principalities and powers this is what must shine before men so that they will see then you manifest a dimension of kingdom wealth and prosperity and yet your heart is not in it this is what frustrates satan because if your heart is in it then satan has a justification he says like the rest but what strategy did you use to be so wealthy yet your heart is with God that is a message that the principalities and powers must study people don't get wealthy with their heart in another place because where your treasure is your heart should be there so by what system your treasure is in the bank and your heart is in heaven and the world says no I don't sleep until the key to my safe is on my waist there are people like that they tie it like a charm and feel it as archaic as it is that is what gives them satisfaction and then they see you today you are rejoicing tomorrow you carry what you have and give it and you are still rejoicing and they say no you are operating by another system and you let them know that my heart has never been around those things my heart is guarded in the same arms unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life this is what God wants to make out of our lives. If you don't believe this part, many people will not be born again through your life. Because we live in a very controversial world. And Satan has formulated all kinds of things to make sure people hate God. So God beckons on you. Are we together now? Chapter 15 and verse 8, John, he says, Hear it. This is how God is glorified. When God records, Jesus is teaching here, not a prophet, not an apostle. Jesus is telling you how the Father gets glory. He says, herein is our Father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. Say much fruit. Say notable results. One more time, say it. Say notable results. The Bible says that God is glorified. Not when we give explanations, when we bear much fruit. He said, by so doing, it will be a validation that we were mentored by Him. A disciple is one who has submitted himself under the tutelage of a rabbi. And no disciple becomes greater than his master. But the zenith of your discipleship is when you become as your master. So He says, when you bear much fruit, you confirm that I'm the one who trained you. That I'm the one who lifted you. Are we together now? Romans chapter 8, when you read from verse 18, it says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And then 19 says, for the earnest expectation, listen very carefully, of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. Not the explanation, not the discussion, not the argument, the manifestation. One of the versions says that creation is waiting for the sons to reveal who they truly are. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise, shine, it says, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Amplified puts it this way. It says, Arise from the depression and the prostration that situations and circumstances have kept you. It says, Rise to a new light. Arise. 
the body of Christ must arise. This, 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 our, this chicken thing that people do around as if God is a weak God that cannot pay bills. God is a weak God that cannot lift men. God is a, no, no. We need to change the representation of God. Do you know what it means to represent Him? It means to present again. When they say to represent, means he was presented in error. Natasha Cobb said there is an army that is rising. We are not just going to break every chain. There was no room to add more to that song. It's not just break every chain. It's like the Bible says, to make a showcase of the multifaceted wisdom of God. Hmm. That principalities and powers may be shown through the church. The multifaceted dimension of God's wisdom. That wisdom that is called the hidden wisdom through the ages. That none of these princes knew for had they known it. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So he's helping us. Say the life of God. The power of God. The revelations of God. The might of God. Will flow through my life. To my generation say it again will flow through my life to my generation that God can find in a lineage of 50 people nobody to rise and you are not just a tongue talker this thing has touched my spirit now that you can get to a point where you say I not only bring you a message I bring you evidence a witness is not a witness until he has evidence. When you go to the law court, your speaking alone is not your evidence. And evidence is a token of truthfulness. A proof that what you said is not a lie. We cannot just be noisemakers moving around. Saying what God can do. Saying he can heal. And our mothers are watching. And their lives are changing. I, I mean for the worst. No. Witnesses must arise with tokens of truthfulness. That we serve a God that is provable. Whose might is demonstrable. He says you come before me with your spares and all of this. But I come before you in a name. I'm not a talkative. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, he came with a message, but that message was backed up with a mantle. Listen, let me tell you, we will never be able to do much for the kingdom if all we have is just a message. Tarry in Jerusalem. I already told you what to say, but wait until the evidence comes. You shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. That power will make you a witness because the power will give you the fortitude to demonstrate the reality of what you are claiming. There's too much talk in the body of Christ. We wrap all kinds of things about what God can do. God will touch you. God will change your family. Amen. Amen. And at the end of it, to the point that we are tired, even us, we don't believe it. We know it's not true. Both the preacher and the listeners. Say, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And Elijah said, no. Let's go to Mount Carmel. If Baal be Baal, be God. Let's know today. If God be God, let's know today. They called upon Baal, the Bible says, from morning till evening. Wise man. Because he knew that the evening sacrifice was a mystery in the spirit. And he allowed them to waste their time. When it was evening, he said, now clear the way for me. Let me show you how we operate in the kingdom. He set up the altars and put everything and call on the God of heaven that day salvation came there has to be a generation with proofs proofs is not falling down proofs is the testimony Ending, the Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy I came and I sat down in his presence was Jacob not in a place in the night no keyboard playing but the Bible says that place was the gate of heaven and he called it the house of God. Meaning every house of God must have a gate from that place that touches the heaven. If the gate of heaven is not there, it is not the house of God. 
the house of God is not just a place where they play music well. The house of God is a place where a portal has been created that touches the heavens and the earth. That when you speak, there is a throne that backs you, validating that that place is the house of God. It is with this grace that we will break the pride of the arrogant. Those who sit down and mock our God. Just because we are quiet does not mean we are disarmed. Let me tell you, a generation will rise. The Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. It says, sound the alarm upon my holy mountain. And then it begins to give a description of an army. It says, before them is like the garden of Eden. Behind them a desolate wilderness. Please listen to what I'm saying. The church has scarceness of the demonstration. What we call demonstration is just for these kind of things that are happening now. That's what we pride ourselves around. Oh, I touched somebody and he fell down. Will God waste his time to die just to touch somebody's head to fall down? What, what foolishness. We are talking of the ability to manipulate a territory and keep it down for the sake of God. Elijah stood not in a radio station and made a proclamation over a territory there will not be rain over a period of three and a half years. Territorial dominion, the grace over territories. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I apportion to you a kingdom. There is a grace over territories. Until we get there, we are just joking and making noise. Nobody will listen to our gospel. We only have emotional people getting born again once here, twice here. When you want to touch the heart of kings, you must bring results that is not in their palace. I've not even started my message. Listen, I told myself, either God will continue to empower me to be able to speak the purposes of God in lives and generations. You don't know how it pains me when I hear that someone that was prayed for still died. Someone that, you know, most preachers just move around and say, oh, ah, there's one testimony. This person was healed. How many others were not healed? Should give us a sense of concern. You prayed for 100 people, two people were healed. Is that a testimony? That in a service like this, must the man of God say demons I cast you for them to go are they that disrespectful should you not come with a fire that I should show up in a place since you are bringing the altar of your secret place should they sit down listening to the sermon did you invite them of God help me. Nothing is working in my life and we lie to people. May God bless you. May God change you. And nothing changes. They know they are not stupid to not return. If they are blessed they will be too grateful to keep quiet. One testimony of a madman being healed in Gadara brought a Decapolis to Jesus. One testimony. One genuine unfaked testimony let me tell you all these fights and dropping prayer requests oh god save my family members there is just one thing there is a way the fire of god comes to settle in the center of your family and shift things within one week pharaoh said god is god pharaoh pharaoh a wizard confess jesus the results 
of Job made Satan to testify before God. Satan went before God and said, I testify. I went to, I just didn't find anything. I told God before I started ministry, and it's still my vow. I said, Lord, I have no business wasting people's time. I'm not there yet, but I cannot sit down in one place. How many minutes should it take for someone to be lifted? How many minutes should it take for someone's situation to be turned around? We have done well teaching the word, but my brothers and sisters, we must carry something. When you wear a good clothes, even you, you see what happens to the people around you because you dress well. So there are spiritual garments that we can wear that can cause territories to know that there is a God in heaven. By the time you don't beg your family members for one naira, there is no basis for stopping you about spiritual things again. By the time you sow a seed that is equivalent to the salary of your father all his lifetime and you say this is just the faithfulness of God, I have to run to church and he says you are still a worker. He say yes, a faithful worker for that matter. Then we, we, we educate them. Have you not been told that out of Zion will come the law? There is an education that will come from Zion. We have seen the one that came from Cosmos. But there is a curriculum we need to, we need to tell the world, sit down. Let's teach you this your pride that you come and harass a pastor, harass believers. No! Out of Zion shall come the law. He said we will come to you and say, teach us his ways. Because of the superiority of the result. Please, where you are now, I don't know how I got to this message now, but I want you to cry and say, Lord, let my life produce results. This is a notable miracle, and we cannot deny it. You can deny miracles, you are not sure. How do you deny a dead body that came back to life? How do you deny a barren woman that is now pregnant with child? There are notable dimensions, incontestable by the pride of Babylon. Lord, as a prophet, give me genuine results. As an apostle, place genuine grace upon my life. Malakatos, Katakatos. Lord, let me not carry things I'm not sure of. These things I'm not sure of. Make propositions I cannot defend in the spirit. Lord, if favor is real, let my life show it. If your mercy is real, let my life show it. If the anointing is real, let my life show it. If prophecy is real, let my life show it. If the spirit of revelation is real, let my life show it. Let it be a bodily manifestation of the multifaceted possibilities resident in the Christ. If you are a lifter, oh God, let it show. What name will my experience with you give my generation? What title, what new name will my experience with you give my generation? What name will I tell my children I know you to be? 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Amen. Listen. My Bible says, for everyone that seeketh, find it. That means many people are not seeking. Just because you hang around a room where you suspect something is missing, does not mean you are seeking. My son, he says, pay attention to my words. He says, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not depart from them. He says, keep them in the midst of your heart. He says, they are life, not to Christians, to those who find them and help to their flesh. My brothers and my sisters, when you find the Gentiles who come to your life, forget about their pride. They will come. Yes, sir. And kings to the brightness of your rising. The worst is that you will be criticized. But no man can deny the figure of God. They saw Jesus and said, this is Beelzebub. He said, if I cast out devils by the prince of devils, with whom do your fathers cast out devils? He was bringing a new order. A woman bound for 18 years, going to church every week, and the priests were talking jackals. Here comes Jesus. And he says, woman, thou art loose from your infirmity. And the people wanted to harass her. And he says, were you not told that as a daughter of Abraham, there are privileges that are to you? Listen. My success as a man of God is not in my traveling around to go and minister to many people. I am blessed. I love God. I thank God for it. But my greatest success is the testimony of the undeniable hand of God in your life. You see, let me tell you. It's like a man seeing you drink water and saying, what is there with water? Just leave it. When thirst comes, you must find water. That means we must trust God to see the areas in our lives where the multifaceted dimensions of God are yet to be fully captured. This is why although you are getting results, you still come to learn. Because in certain areas, there still remain a rest for the people of God. You have not yet entered your Sabbath in certain areas. By the grace of God, you have gotten the principles of prayer, for instance. You have gotten the revelations of the word. But you are yet to see the grace for performance. So there is still a Sabbath that you need to enter in that area. And it will cause you to continue to press one day like light from heaven. Something will open to you. By the time you go back to your fellowship, and then you are praying, you will see the missing link. And your eyes will see. One day you will sit down. I think he was, I, I, I was teaching years ago outside. One gentleman, he was, um, I'm, I'm sure one of these uh, scholars or Islamic scholars or so. He was sitting outside when I was teaching on the reality of heaven and, and hell. And all of a sudden, the heavens were open. And that gentleman, his eyes, he was not in koinonia again. And he was having a separate encounter with Jesus. And that's how he got born again. Please, don't criticize proofs. Value it. Resolve makes your life worth following. Resolve makes your messages worth listening to. Don't criticize proofs. Your life will be difficult without it. We call Harvard, Harvard because of the proofs in the lives of the students that come there. You are a man of God here, please listen. We need proofs. If you are a man of God connected to this ministry, truly let me tell you, I will be disappointed in, in the dealings of God with you if you do not carry a minimum requirement of fire and grace and revelation. There must be a token and evidence of truthfulness upon your life. Go for a meeting and you are preaching and someone is sleeping because of the nonsense you are saying. You are quoting rubbish, talking, making noise, all kinds of things. Do men not revere the presence of God again? Have you forgotten what happens when God is really in a place? For some of us, the one thing we lack is freshness. 
not fresh. You can know you are not fresh, and your stillness is detectable. You can raise a song, and it didn't sound like last week again. What happened? Please sit down. What did I get here? Mighty God. Our time is gone. I'm telling you, I couldn't even touch what I'm doing now. Let's let's at least touch something and then we'll pray. If we close here, I think you got something. True? You got something. Gracious. When Benga was up here, he was sharing these exact same things. You see that if there be a message. There are things that must happen in your life. Messengers are sent. If you send me to a Jimmy and I get to him, there should be what you send me to give. You see that? Imagine that I say, wait for me and I come and meet you and you say, so what is it? I made you cancel every other thing. Let's make the presence of God worth it. Let's make staying in the house of God worth it. That when people say it's time for church, I was glad when they said unto me. Not just for the formality. Nobody will be glad coming to a place where there are no results. Human beings are not stupid. In the days of the generals, service will be starting by 6 and by 2. 2 o'clock. 2 in the night. People will already be lining up. Because they know that one encounter And from nowhere here she comes A woman of God with power and fire And whilst teaching people's lives The presence of God should make our lives easy So I'm passionate about seeing the multifaceted dimension Of God's presence And God's life And God's glory find expression in us. And let me tell you, if you listen to the things that God is revealing to you in this place, they will produce results in your life. They will. It's true. You've heard me say that we will all be great. And the greater part is that we will all know ourselves. It's not just a cliche that was invented by man's intelligence. There is no way you will not rise that's why for those who allow these mundane things to distract them against their gaze on Christ and his dealings they are not wise because it is in your focus that you are able to walk on water and meet Jesus are we together now? so we thank God for all of these things these blessings but our gaze remain on him they looked up to him and their faces were lightened, the Bible says, and they were not ashamed. Write this down, please. Let's see what we can do, and then we'll pray. I tell you, my spirit is fired up already. When the presence and the power of God is visibly made manifest in your life then you are walking under an open heavens when the power of God when the presence of God is made manifest in your life then it is true that you are walking under an open heavens every time the heavens opened in scripture it was associated with rain it was associated like in the case of Ezekiel with the visions of God when there are notable miracles signs wonders transformation in your life and through your life to others then your heavens are said to be open number two when you step into an unusual dimension of encounters, supernatural encounters, the visions of God, the revelatory dimensions of the Spirit. When you step, unusual.
unusual visitations unusual encounters unusual spiritual illumination these are proofs that your heaven is open please write it down so when the power of God is visibly made manifest in your life when you operate under a frequency now this has nothing to do with being called into the prophetic in fact it has nothing to do with being a minister of the gospel in as much as we know the fivefold ministry no it is simply a state of spiritual health and a dimension that you have pressed to that you can access the visions of God he says that I was by the river Shiva and then the heavens were open and I saw the visions of God I saw the visions of God I saw the visions of God Jesus himself was he saw Nathaniel and he said an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile Nathaniel comes to him and says while you were under the tree I saw you and Nathaniel was amazed he said just because I've seen this you have seen this you are amazed he said you shall see greater things than this what are the greater things you shall see the heavens so the heavens opening is not a small matter God calls it a greater thing it's a greater dimension that you see your heavens open and then you see the angels ascending and descending upon the son of man the same experience happened in chapter 28 of Genesis the Bible says that Jacob got to a place and put a stone there and laid down there for to sleep then the Bible says that he dreamed a dream and he saw the visions of God a ladder connecting the earth to the heavens and angels ascending and descending at the top of it was God himself and he says I'm the God of Abraham I'm the God of Isaac until then there was no God of Jacob he was creating his testimony giving God room to call himself the God of Jacob and then God began to proclaim blessings upon him and then he says surely the Lord was in this place and then I knew not he blessed the place this is the house of God the gate of heaven open heavens is very powerful Jesus one time when he finished speaking with the disciples the Bible says he was right there in their presence he began to levitate and as he raised a cloud received him and two men came and said why you know why worry about Jesus the same Jesus you saw going up he will return the same way you have seen him go so God wants to grant us access to illumination listen let me tell you it is no secret on earth that if all you see is what is on earth you will never rise beyond it it is not a secret that men who reign people whose lives are invincible in this earth realm are men who have been granted access to the seen eyes and the hearing ears whether it is through the operation of dark powers or it is through the anointing of the Holy Spirit it doesn't matter you will never prosper in this kingdom if all you see is what people are saying there are treasures of darkness and there are hidden riches in secret places and the Lord vowed that he would grant it unto us is that true the scripture that we began to pray with the Bible tells us that the earth can bring out salvation salvation can come from the earth when you farm and your produce grow salvation came from the earth because you will eat of it he says oh earth hear the word of the Lord was it not the earth that opened and swallowed men and closed by where did they go to the earth is a living thing it has chambers it can hear that's why he can give life to seeds when they die the earth is like a womb something can be sown in it and it can give up and the bible says the earth like a woman whose pregnancy has been overdue open up and bring the salvation that is hidden within you these are not things that are taught in school you must be given access to the eyes of the spirit and that only happens when your heavens are open listen carefully because the way that we are going about our lives it will only end up in pain and misery until the secrets of God are given to us and the Bible says that the secrets of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenants 
is God speaking to us? The secrets of God. You don't walk in the anointing just because you read a book about it. Just because an anointed man wrote a book. No. It is in his light that you see light. You can be reading a novel written by Joshua Selman. And while you are reading, the Holy Spirit must open between that page. And then you see something no one has seen. That becomes the spirit and the life of God's word. And the entrance of that word, not just what you are reading, will give life to you and you will be able to prove it. There are times that I've read, I've been reading books and I stayed on a page for only God knows how long. Because I circled that page and I found out that the reason why I took that book was that one page. I read something that didn't make sense and God joined it with another thing that didn't make sense and it became a key. One, two, three and a door opens and there you are, a new dimension. And you will know you have entered a new dimension. Like a baby knows he's no longer in the womb. The baby doesn't cry in the womb. So when the baby comes out, he knows that this is a new environment. One, two, and the baby is crying. New environment. You can, you can know I was here yesterday in the spirit. And now I am here. I was here in prophecy. I was here in revelation. There is a greater command of spiritual authority. I see. I know. There is a greater carriage. There is a greater arsenal. You can know that the angels that walked with you from 2000 to 2007, they are no longer the angels. You see it by the rate of performance. That a word is sent and you see that there is an ease of performance. You know that something like they promote a man and say you are now a director. And you find a car there. Yeah, you find a new house help. The same angels don't work with people all the time. No. No. Angels are appointed to levels and offices. They are not just appointed to men. When you step into levels and offices, there are angels that are, are left like that. One angel, one angel, read your Bible and see how many people they defeated. When angels threw hailstone, did they kill people? Yes. The manna that fell from heaven, although the Bible doesn't say that angels brought it, but the Bible, the Bible says angels bread. You should know things are changing in your life. So the visions of God. Number three, let me give us one more. How do I know my heaven is open? When, now take note, when there is a notable operation of favor and abundance, mark these two words. I'm not talking on finances, but let me tell you sincerely, my brothers and my sisters, your heavens are really closed. If you do not step into a notable dimension of favor and abundance, it's true. Joel chapter 2 Let me show you something The Holy Spirit just ministered something to my heart We are going to pray Then 23, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he had given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause down to come down. To come where? To come where? To come down. The rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Then what will happen? 24. And the floors shall be what? Intelligent people talk to me. He didn't say your stomach. He didn't even say your storehouse. He says your floors shall be full of wheat. And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. Open heavens. Open heavens. Where your floor is full of wheat. 
and then your fats shall overflow the fat says just your bands your presses with wine and with oil when your heavens are open abundance must answer to your life it is true it has nothing to do with background now let me tell you something i have learned when you operate under an open heavens listen there are dimensions follow me please let me have your attention when your heavens are open there are dimensions whoever comes within the spiritual climate of your open heavens within that time they are with you they will tap into the possibilities that your open heaven provides that means i can go to come gentleman i can go to visit this gentleman and he has no business receiving favor but because i carried a spiritual climate i just entered his house i came to visit you and someone who has no business calling him will call him he's been manipulated by the climate that i'm working under it's true There are men who are blessed because other men are there. There are men who are oppressed because other men are there. Jonah entered the boat of people who should arrive safely. They were meant to arrive safely. But because a man who carried a climate of disobedience and Jonah kept quiet as if he didn't know what was happening. Jonah, your Jonah was in a boat. And people were there and they started losing properties that means there are men that carry climates when a man who carries a close heaven comes to you it can affect you listen please listen to what I'm saying Jonah sat down inside the boat while they were throwing their properties Jonah kept quiet and then they were about to cast lots and Jonah said look don't waste your time I'm the reason I'm carrying something that is making remember they didn't believe or didn't whether they believed in Jonah or not the climate was working Jesus sends the 70 with his climate he said go and they return and say ah master even the demons were subject to us in your name and he says do not rejoice just because of this in other words this is not your making i gave you an atmosphere to go with your joy is that your name now is written that means you now have access to also carry that climate let that be your joy not that you are moving with another person's climate but now you have become a partaker yourself your name is written you can now carry a distinct spiritual climate he said that should be your joy jesus is teaching here you see that so you can get into a place and bring what was given to you in the secret place you don't have to say this is what was given it speaks grace speaks anointing speaks let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if you carry real fire it speaks because you see there are angelic beings that are protectors of God's reputation upon your life the Bible says that these angels confirm the words of his messengers they don't confirm your word provided you are in that spiritual office and ranking they have been mandated to protect the integrity of God committed to your life so you will find out that the possibilities that happen in the atmosphere with one man the same God is there yes but the possibilities are not the same because the spiritual climate by which we operate if they are not the same the possibilities the system of defense that can stand for one person may not happen for the other you may insult another person and go scot free you insult another person and you will not last two days everything leaves you because there are angels is in tethers they defend the integrity of God committed to people you 
see, listen, this ministry you see, there are covenants and ordinances, and there are angels assigned to signify that revelation. Revelations 1 verse 1, he said the revelation of Jesus, which he gave unto his servant John, he said he sent it and signified it by his angels. Angels signify revelations. They confirm that it is true, this anointing was given to this individual. There are graces that were given to me And if I make utterances that resonate with those graces There are angelic beings mandated To validate that it is true If I make claims over graces that were not given You will be surprised how it will look as if I am not anointed Are you getting, are you getting this now? Please get this This night's message is for impartation just get it after koinonia and just quietly sit down listen to it in the night and just soak your spirit and see what happens i really believe that what is happening to us is impartation what is an impartation a transference of possibilities that's it transference listen god does not transfer spiritual possibilities by distributing it to all men god finds a man and enters a covenant with that man to represent a spiritual portal on earth by which men can access that possibility so that anyone that will enter into that possibility will do it in alignment to that man and the covenant he has with God that's how spiritual possibilities are distributed God finds men uniquely builds their spirit enters a covenant that allows God to flow in that dimension through that one man then he mandates creation to align with the grace and the covenant upon that individual he said look unto your father Abraham you will never prosper on earth neglecting the man Abraham he is God's idea you will never rout the blessing of the spirit even though you come through Christ, the Bible says, Galatians 3.29, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So even in Christ, he still routes you back to the man, the patriarch, Abraham. These are the mysteries that this kingdom operates in. They are not opinions, no. And those who have done it consciously or not find out that suddenly the realm of the spirit is not particularly biased to them they may not be so smart but by the foolishness of of the understanding spiritual things then they step into it there are angels in this city once it is friday and once it is koinonia time remember the bible says the angels are the gatherers they move around and they war against the forces of darkness that will try to stop people from coming. It's a covenant. It's an ordinance. Please sit down. I don't know if I should continue or we'll just, we'll just pray. I really don't know what God is doing this night, but I'm, I'm happy about it. So I said, the possibilities, listen. Do you know why we sacrifice so much to be able to host superior dimensions of God's presence and walk under an open heavens? Because our alignment is proof of love. We can carry your climate and borrow someone your spiritual climate so that the testimonies that have been long overdue, your climate affords God an opportunity to visit the person fast because of your presence. He said if you enter a house Meaning you entered with certain things If they receive you Let that thing you came with rest on them But if they refuse let That means that thing on you is a living thing It can move It can return back to you And you dust your feet And leave them with their closed hands My brothers and my sisters let me tell you I wish that what I were telling you were a lie I would have just apologized to say sorry but it is true. This is not a call to idolize men. Don't get me wrong. I'm teaching you open heavens. The possibilities that accrue to a man who pays the price to walk under an open heavens is a wonder. Nothing short of a wonder. Let's write so we can pray. Let me
me give you three keys that will help you to live under an open heavens. Number one, please write it. No matter how many times you've listened to this, listen to it again. The first key is a life of fervent and effectual prayer. The first key to living under an open heavens is a life of fervent and effectual prayer. Isaiah 64, please. Isaiah 64, please give it to us from verse 1. Effectual prayer. Prayer that must be strategic. Listen, let me tell you. Many believers, I can tell you, do not have a consistent prayer life. Many have a prayer life. The problem is the consistency. Look at me. When you give birth to a baby, the mother breastfeeds the baby how many times? For as long as the growth process of the child demands. There is no hard and fast rule. There may be some medical guide here and there. But once that baby is crying in need of food, what happens? A good mother that cannot forget her suffering child will have to breastfeed that child. And now when the child is weaned from breast milk, what happens? Feeding still continues. The consistency of the feeding is what translates to the growth of the person. There are loads that this young boy you are seeing cannot carry now. Give this boy the next 9 to 10 years. He will be able to lift it. Give this young boy 20 years of eating. A time will come he will carry you. Give him two more years in addition. He will beat you. Are you seeing the difference now? now? This is somebody that you can beat and kick. Meaning spiritually, that's how it is. A life of prayer. Show me a weak believer. You don't know anything. You are a shy, ashamed, confused, scattered person. Set your altars like Elijah and remain there and watch what happens. You make the secret of prayer. Brothers and sisters, look at me. The secret of prayers is not eight hours per day. The secret of prayer is staying. The staying power, it becomes part of the ordinances that run your life. Many believers are fire brigade prayer warriors. The moment you hear something that is alarming, you just crash into God and you sit down for eight hours in one day. Praying and sleeping and praying and sleeping. No, you have to create a culture out of prayer if you want your heavens to be open. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, those who really pray, said knowingly with understanding, walk under an open heaven. It's true. You, you can know the, the palpability of your open heavens can be felt. A man can be an accurate Bible study teacher. But that Bible study is not backed up by the ministry of prayer. You will feel something. It's like there is a resistance. The doctrine is sound. But the delivery is crippled. Because the heavens are closed. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. This is not a discussion. It's a prayer. That thou wouldest come down. Why? That the mountains may, may flow down at your presence. That you will rend the heavens. You get up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made. The devil blows the breeze of cold around your life. You say, The devil, you are a liar. I'm on my way going somewhere. You don't have to make noise for everybody to know you are praying. Because sometimes you live with people that will be angry and will harass you. And, and, and it's honest on them. Someone cannot be working hard and just because you are the roommate, you are. You are if you are shouting under the anointing, at least you can understand. You can pray under your breath and command fire that will reach the heavens. Roast everything on the way till it reaches heaven, like the sacrifice of Abel. It will start as if you are playing. While you are praying, the devil is trying to toy around with your mind. If our generation becomes prayerless, we are in trouble. Hear me, yo. 
if our generation becomes prayerless we are in trouble prayer is not everything but in the matters that only prayer can solve there is no replacement you must stay there are times that you don't pray for one week to get that answer you must pray and pray till a day will come you will know that today's prayer was not a usual prayer you will get up as usual and the next thing you wake up and see that you have been under the anointing for a long time you will return back with visions and strategies you will know that God visited me do you know why many believers do not have visitations when you mention visitations encounters most believers don't even know encounters seldom happen when we are just carelessly sitting around there must be that spiritual investment of prayer Prayer is an investment. You have to keep saturating your spiritual climate with prayer. It's like a spiritual bank you are making deposits. Let me tell you, when that cloud is heavy, it's not just over money issues. Answers will begin to come. Unfortunately now, our generation, we need to balance our teachings on prayer. Because sometimes in a bid to create balance, we make mistakes and we are indoctrinating a generation to ignore the ministry of prayer. No. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. My dear ladies, pray. Prayer is not for men. Prayer is for anybody that wants to reign on earth. Children, pray. Don't pray and watch children roam around. That's why I like it when we fast here and our children join us and all of that. Teach them to pray. Samuel was under the spiritual climate of Eli. Forget that his eyes started becoming dim. Eli was always at the altar praying. And Samuel could afford to lie down close to the altar. And he benefited from the track record, the spiritual investment of Eli. And he had a voice. Samuel and he got up went to Eli and he received a blueprint of his destiny a husband that does not pray will have a nonsense family let me tell you in this day and age it's not enough for men to just have money you must be a praying priest not just a speaking priest there are many speaking priests you've heard me say it I challenge the men and by men I don't just mean married men alone I challenge the men take spiritual responsibility over your climate your children are sleeping and everybody is sleeping Shakos, katabata. let them be used to hearing your voice in the night go and lay hands on them they want to wake up say no you just sleep let them know it as part of the incense let it be your evening sacrifice people watch films overnight have you seen that happen in many families? I mean in the night or night vigil of films. One will finish, they will slot it back. If you do this kind of thing in this generation, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, you will be too weak to prevail. It's a guarantee that I give you. You want to do ministry, especially, and stand again. Do you know the forces of darkness that fight an average man of God? Oh, come on. Have you seen peace? Have you seen one, you do drop honey somewhere or drop apple or something and see the amount of hungry reptiles and everything coming to fight? That's how you are. There are forces day and night that will fight tooth and nail to capsize the work of God upon your life. You must pray. And then you need fresh grace. This our generation is allergic to staleness. Once they mark you as a stale man of God, they will punish you in ministry for being stale. They will punish you with lack of invitations. Are we together now? Nobody will invite you to come for his or her conference and convention to just come and deliver nonsense. You must be fresh. He says the fire upon the altar must burn day and night. It must not go off. That means you must have the eyes to see when the coal is dying so that you trust God for grace again to put more coals. Now, it is my dealing with God and I have no right to just impart it on you. But let me tell you, I've explored this prayer thing a little and I can tell you, if you don't pray at night, you are not a prayer warrior. There are many people today claiming a prayer warrior is not somebody who prays in prayer bar on Tuesday. 
a prayer warrior is somebody who has an altar that is known by the gates of hell, known by heaven, and known by the result it commands among men. What time did Jesus pray? Go and read your Bible. Jesus would get up and impregnate his day because the morning is like a woman with a womb. You can impregnate her. And then step back and watch as she delivers for you in the day. Please receive grace to conquer the spirit of slumber. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that every force fighting anyone's prayer life here, especially if you have the call of God upon your life, I decree over your life that altar that fights your prayer life. I crush it down now. I crush it down now. Men ought always to pray. Sensitivity is built in the place of prayer. Sens listen, listen. If you are, whether a prayer band leader, a group fellowship leader, listen to me. Many group fellowship leaders are the least prayerful people. Just because you pray in the group is usually for ego. Your, the true strength of your prayer is what you do alone when no one is seeing you. Not just when... You can do a night vigil and a group leader can stand and pray just because he's praying for the people to hear. You must trust God so that men don't lie to you. They can put pressure on you. But when you are alone, there are encounters you don't have in a corporate system. You have to be alone. Lord, I'm awake again. One day becomes one week. One week becomes one month. One month becomes one year. One year becomes two years. And heaven is watching and saying, I think we need to measure a thousand cubits to this man. We have seen the grace. We have seen the consistency. In the rain you are praying. In the sun you are praying. Under AC you are praying. You are trusting God for grace. And God knows you are human. So sometimes he sees the way sleep has whipped you. And you drag yourself in the name of the Lord. Whatever skill you can employ. Use worship. Use whatever. Find one of my messages that I was shouting and drumming every slumber. Whatever you can do. It is your responsibility to invent the skills that keep you prayerful. Don't assume you will be prayerful just because you are anointed. It is a lie from the pit of hell. I tell you this. Listen, I live a very busy schedule so I can tell you. Very busy schedule. You must intentionally trust God for grace and a strategy. If not, your spiritual life will go down while you are rising. I return from a trip now. Tomorrow is my younger brother's wedding. Yes. Praise the Lord. By the way, pray for our family. Adorable young man. And he's going to be getting married tomorrow. I'm here now, this night. I had to go and see them when I returned back from my trip. From Abuja, I went to Joss to see them, make sure everything is well. Came back here to preach. I'm still going to see people this night. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'm on my way to Joss. I'm even just going to show my face at the service and move because I'm going to Gombe. There is a conference. From Gombe, I'm going to Abuja, returning back again here. And then I have a meeting with Nathaniel Basi. And then everybody say ministry. Say breakthrough. That is the killer of anointings. If you only pray inside a plane, your prayer, the, the demons in Africa, let me tell you something. My brothers and my sisters, we come from regions that require seriousness. You must let the devil know you are serious for him to let you go. Even Jesus finished fasting and Satan came and said, what, what are you talking about? Jesus' is fasting invited Satan. A man finishes fasting for 40 days and the first person he sees is Satan. And Satan is not shaking and falling. Just sing two choruses, two prayer points, and, and drum your knees and round up. No. There are dimensions. I trust that, I don't know, we may not be able to do it this year. We need to train people on the dimensions of prayer. This give me, give me tea, give me bread. Yes, God wants to give you. But these tongues God gave you is a deep mystery. If you are not feeling the Holy Ghost here, as I will always say, with evidence of praying in tongues, fluent tongues, spiritual languages, you have shortchanged your spiritual life. 
because there are times that you need to hold on to the horns of the altar you may not know what is going wrong but you know something is wrong and that thing wrong can be the life of your family member under a mess the mercy of a kingdom ambassador someone's life is dangling you, you are picking it in the spirit you, you don't know exactly what is wrong that is the time to pray not for 30 minutes until that load is lifted light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord like a candle light me Lord light me Lord light me Lord tonight and then we'll pray so the ministry of prayer the bible says elijah was a man of like passion in other words elijah got hungry in other words elijah could sleep let me tell you this please look at me if you sense the call of god upon your life let me tell you step one is not to look for auditorium step one is not to look for an usher or a PA. Step one is not even to look for members. Step one is not to look for the person who will print handbill for you. I am apostle A and B, and you disgrace yourself before men and before principalities. Nothing just happens. There is always another prophetess in the temple praying so that Jesus will arrive. If you see Jesus arrive, he didn't just come. Another prophetess was there Travelling in the spirit Number two, sacrifice Open heavens The Macedonian church The Bible says Give of themselves You find that in 2 Corinthians From chapter 8 From verse 1 to 5 it's talking about their givings but every time we talk of sacrifice people think it's all about money my brothers and my sisters the first sacrifice is you not your offering not your ATM you can remove your shoe and drop in church and go back your shoe is a living sacrifice but you are not a living sacrifice God didn't say offer your shoes or offer your head or offer your brain are we together now? yes I beseech thee brethren by the message of God he says that he offer not even your spirit your body what is a sacrifice sacrifice suggests anything that is constraining that means your body will feel it let's not lie to ourselves my brothers and my sisters the journey to greatness in the spirit will constrain you a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God the Bible says that is your reasonable act of worship Say sacrifice. As a man of God, you will need sacrifice. You are in an office where you are the only believer there. Automatically, you know that Satan has many bodies to be able to manipulate you. You will need to stand at an edge in the spirit through sacrifice. Sacrifice of your life. Sacrifice of your resources. Second Chronicles 7 verse 1 to 4 let me not we're not going to read the sacrifice of your time a sacrifice is anything that constrains you anything that is not naturally convenient for you to do sacrifice is a covenant in the spirit psalms 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice Sacrifice is a covenant. It is. 
unfortunately this our proud generation does not respect sacrifice you see people command certain levels of results and you just believe the way it's just the guy just prays god just gave him grace for prayer the guy just heals maybe he was fortunate to just meet when he healed no we need to be people who respect sacrifice are we together now gather unto me my saints but among those saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice let me tell you this whether it is a sacrifice of your seed whether it is a sacrifice of your life there is a way you can sacrifice your life in the service of god you have donated yourself to god let me see the devil that will come to bring shame and reproach to your life they will obey if they obey and serve me they obey and serve me huh the bible says they will spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure service there are people in this ministry let me tell you before the devil touches them maybe a nation would have been dead first because of the way they have carried themselves like an offering the same way you put offering inside a basket they, they wrap themselves inside an envelope and drop themselves and say god take i've donated myself the devil comes there god says, if i if i see you near this world because my kingdom is being promoted there are many givers who don't sacrifice if i'm a millionaire and i'm giving hundred hundred thousand is that a sacrifice that's just donation sacrifice of prayer there are people who it is their life's ministry to pray for me i know it and i see it sometimes in the spirit let me see the devil that will go to touch them god says, ah, this boy this girl this mama is praying for me day and night oh god fresh fire and then one devil wants to come and take their life that's when you will know that there are angels on god listen to what i'm telling you it is true John the beloved he loved Jesus so much look at what happened unusually in his life when you study Bible history they carried him and dropped him inside boiling oil hot boiling oil like you are frying egg and that guy just sat down inside that oil he sat down inside the oil everything they tried to do was just watching them and they said let's leave him in an island just dropped him in an island called Patmos and there the visions of God was given to him what of Daniel they conspired to punish that guy when he stepped into the lion's den an angel appeared is it not in your bible and said you, you come lion come Daniel didn't kill the lion Daniel had an angel. You mustn't kill lions. They can be stopped. An angel appeared. He said, Daniel, no. So there are church not so. It's true. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, touch not mine anointed. Do my prophets no harm. There are some of you who have represented altars to your family. The darkness that usually will come to every time they want to come, they see your face. And God said, I still have an ambassador in that family. Have you seen a dog try to pick something and you are standing there? He will go around, try to touch it, but he remembers you are there. He will turn and go around and you are there. Somebody is standing like an altar through sacrifice to your family. There are people, because of their sacrifice, God has vowed that they will never beg. You will be surprised to see how much they continue to disobey financial principles but when god is blessing people he will share it in a way that you must go around and you are angry god come on this is disobedience before everybody and god will say there's something they did though. when they were roofing a church the young lady emptied her two thousand naira account and dragged it like a fool i came and said god take and god said you gave me two thousand your all I have vowed you must marry a rich man you will be surprised this thing i'm saying you will think is sarcastic gentleman just stroll around and goes i'm not the will for you not because there's anything wrong with marrying whoever but just god you use see 
everything God gives you, you can make a ladder out of it. Ah. Your seed can become a ladder. Your life can become a ladder. This man you are seeing, let me tell you, I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the Living God. This man you see is a bank of sacrifice. If you look at my hands, what you are going to see dripping is blood. There is nothing I cannot give God, and there is nothing I will not give. So when you see the little things God is doing here and there, don't think it's luck. Before you admire any man's resolve, find out first. Some of you, God can tell you this brother is a prayer warrior, but I'm here to teach him about finances. For my name's sake, take him home. And you cast the voice. You shed grace, you sang praise and worship, you even fell down. But the voice to sacrifice something. <laughs> Lord, I didn't hear you. Don't allow, just because people make wrong these principles, does not mean that it is not a mystery. When God wanted sons, he carried Jesus, put him on an altar and sacrificed him. The result, he brought a harvest of many sons into glory. When you sacrifice your time, you will get something out of that time. That is worth it. The law of sacrifice is important. In this kingdom, there is no such thing as something for nothing. I'm telling you this, believe me, it's not true. As cheap salvation is the cheapest thing you can find in this kingdom and even that you must give God your time and your attention and then come and make a commitment the sacrifice of your ego is what you must drop on the line to receive with meekness is God speaking to us now yes. sacrifice is a language our generation does not like People come to church and after one hour they are frowning at the man of God. As soon as they share the grace, they will stand to gossip or talk about their needs behind a truck near the church for three hours. That means they were not tired. It was a spirit that was robbing them. People hurry up in services. As soon as the service is over, they go and open the boot of their car and bring out bread and popcorn. <laughs> And hug for poor for two hours and not be tired. Matter, matter. You are worried and upset about many things, but one thing is needful. One thing is needful to sit down and receive something by sacrifice. Nothing great just comes at a platter. Please let's not lie to ourselves. Where is he? This is a doctor. They didn't dash him. They didn't hang. They, the Nigerian Association of, I think, medical students or so in, in Lagos, they gave me, they did a, a, a false induction for me and they made a stethoscope customized. I've not used it till, till now. The, the first time I tried the thing, I said, What in the world is going on? I'd rather hear the voice of God than the voice of my heart. <laughs> I mean, are we together? This is a doctor. How he looks, notwithstanding, whether you like him or not, is a doctor. After years of laborious study, are we together? He has earned the right to give you injection. Turn, he will turn, and he will give you injection because he has earned the right. Are you getting what I'm saying now? That's right. That's how people have earned the right through sacrifice to you. They can look at you and say, God, have mercy on this, and you'll be surprised. You have been praying for two weeks. Oh God, mercy. Oh God, mercy. And somebody says, Lord, I join my faith. You know, this issue of I'm praying for you now, because of how powerless we are, it's not even working again. During the days of our fathers, when an anointed man says he's praying for you, you rejoice. Jesus said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. He said, and when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. How? By praying for them too. Paul said, for this cause, I, Paul, bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you. He's praying for the church. 
you can pray for people my brothers and my sisters when you pray for men you take advantage of the climate of your open heavens and stretch it towards them like i can send you recharge card are we together i have 10 naira you have zero naira i can transfer two naira and it will get to your phone and your phone will be empowered and you start work. you didn't go to buy it but by the abundance of the supplies of that which i have i have given it to you listen healing is not the only thing that is transferable are we together spiritual climates you can share climates that's the reason why you can pray alone and after 10 minutes you are tired and one day somebody that has a real solid grace for prayer says come let's pray and even you you are surprised that four hours has passed the first 30 minutes will look like hellfire. fire you are wondering this guy is still singing and i'm already tired no water in this place no food and this guy does it. Let's, let's continue. He's, I, I usually pray for two hours. And after 30 minutes, you feel like dying, but something will happen to you. By the time your body gets weak to a level, it will give up and there will be an ascendance in your spirit. Immediately, you will find out that you who believe you will not survive one hour, you are even the one that will tell him, Should we not go and pray tomorrow? Then you go back to the weak people you left before and wonder that you have been praying for 10 minutes just like them. He said, let's round up. He said, are you joking? We're about to sing. Play the guitar. Can your seed become a ladder in the spirit? Can your heart become a ladder in the spirit? Your sacrifice is your best. It doesn't have to be offered like an offering. But it must be handed over to the Lordship of Christ. What's that scene I saw? My very best Lord I give my very best Lord I give My very best Lord I give to you With all my heart My very best Lord I give My very best Lord I give My very best Lord I remember a year the Lord asked me to sow a seed. If not that I didn't know the voice of God, I would ask the demon to appear first. I would say, Do let angels help me tie that spirit. Let me tear the spirit one by one for that kind of ungodly instruction. When God demands Isaac, even you, you don't know what part of Isaac to carry. Is it his head? Is it his hand? Is it his face? God says, all of Isaac. I'm not saying you should sow. Don't get me wrong. And Isaac may not always mean your finance. Your heart is heavier than your money. Oh. Let me tell you, it's easier to carry money than to carry your heart. Many of us think giving God your heart is just... A, giving God your heart is not just born again. It's surrender. It is painful. You carry your heart and drop it on that fire and watch the fire of the Holy Ghost roast that heart and then it becomes like the bush that was burning you think it will be consumed but the heart becomes purified and you are watching your heart turn to gold and with the heat in that heart God will say now since you gave me let me put it you gave him a cold heart of stone and he picks it and makes gold and he puts that heart and you turn to the nations and you will subdue them because of the fire that has come upon your heart tonight God is calling us you want to see an open heavens get used to sacrifice I believe that God wants us to be comfortable don't get me wrong but this Christianity of excessively advocating convenience as the ultimate proof of godliness is a joke when you walk with God every once in a while there will be demands he does it on purpose to make sure he remains Lord one day he will tell you to do something that is very painful it was painful for Abraham to take imagine like Pastor Alpha telling this adorable boy now saying him and his wife two of them forward march to one mountain on the way to Kaduna and you see people say Pastor Alpha is everything alright say it's alright and they hang this boy and they are about to kill him he said who asked you to do that work he said God do you know the embarrassment and God kept watching he said stop now I know that you fear at me he says and i swear by my name that in blessing he said if ye are the children of abraham you will do the works of abraham it's not the works of the law it's the works of faith are we together now 
We are going to pray this night. Our time is over. But I came tonight to challenge us. Listen. There are benefits to an open heaven. It is worth every sacrifice that you commit. I wish that I had the grace to share testimonies. Now, it would be wrong for me as a leader to not share testimonies. But sometimes I minimize these things because sometimes some testimonies, if not managed, will end up discouraging you instead of lifting up your spirit. But there are things that I will share with you about my life and about what God has done and is doing in this ministry that you will not know whether to cry from your eyes or your mouth or your ears. That's what happens. You will dare a man that is a living sacrifice. You will be surprised how God will act like he doesn't know you. When Aaron and Miriam started talking against Moses and they were talking all kinds of things the glory came and when it lifted Aaron was immune because of his priesthood but Miriam became white leprous as white as snow imagine a human being like as a warning but okay this is I've done this tomorrow you will know that you will not just touch he suffered no man to do that he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed an anointed man is not just do you know how the anointing is made you have to you is a threshing floor you squeeze the, the oil and as you crush that oil the pain but you your focus and under the oil is dripping and it's that oil that is purified that comes upon your head I want you to walk in power and I want you to walk under an open heavens I told you something I think the last time I was here it was week before last now nobody is greedy they just don't perceive you to be anointed enough to merit the level of benevolence they have to give the same person who will complain giving you 100 naira will give another person 5 million and sleep happy that he had the privilege there are benefits to an open heaven there are benefits to sacrifice are you hearing what i'm saying now it will ease your life it is better to pay the price in the presence than to pay the price before men men are wicked people they will punish you and bring all kinds of excuses man of god hear me this running around looking for a name stay in the secret place and let god perfect his workings and his glory upon your life and let me see the power in existence that has the fortitude to mock the integrity of god over your life for his name's sake when he casts his name upon your life he makes it a responsibility to defend himself upon you number of you have come from several places here because of what you've heard that the Lord is doing my brothers and my sisters these are not the workings of men they are the workings of God but they are worked out through men men that have become living sacrifices epistles testaments of endurance and tonight I'm calling on you that if you seek to see an open heavens in your life in your ministry then you must among the keys that I've given you. There are so many, but I'm just giving you two tonight. I want us to walk under an open heavens. You will know you are under an open heavens. Multiply visions. Some of us, you've not dreamt in five months and you think it's normal. Are we together? You don't see anything. The only thing you hear is an alarm clock. You go back to bed, even your spirit sleeps. What, what kind of human being are you? Darkness is looming around you. You don't pick any signal till it happens. You have dreams that have keys in them, but you wake up and don't remember them. It's a revelation of the weakness of your spirit. Did you hear what I just said? That you settle down and have dreams and wake up and you do not have the capacity. Was that not what happened to the king? He slept and he forgot the dream. And then another man did not sleep and yet picked the dream. A contrast of the health of their spirit. Hold the hands of someone. Our time is up. God is making us people of power. 
let your living water flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled me. I like you in the next two minutes while you are holding the hand of someone just begin to pray in the spirit say Lord I'm ready to an open heaven I'm ready to walk in the favor that open heavens bring I'm ready to walk in the blessings please help help them help them help them for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. You pray, come for thine is the kingdom of Arakatu, the power and the glory, yeah, forever and ever. Amen. For thine is the kingdom, you pray, the power and the glory. Forever and ever Amen I'm deep in love with you Abba point I'm seeing like smoke just moving across inside and outside pray this prayer point Lord open my heavens tonight lift your voice and pray and watch the wonder of what tonight's meeting will do pray
my crown before the highest royalty. Some of you are long overdue for testimonies. And, and, and this is not just some exaggeration. In the name of Jesus, I stand and I prophesy. Help this gentleman. Help that guy. In the name I prophesy. Please believe what you are hearing. Don't just stand and argue. I decree and declare by the power of the highest, the creative force of the Father, I speak to you everything that is stopping your testimony from coming to pass. I command now, I lose your testimony. I lose your testimony. Like the donkey, the master has need of it. The saints have need of it. I lose your testimony. I bring you into a season of dressed up testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. says God who had commanded light to shine not into darkness out of darkness in every darkness there is light God can call light out of every darkness I speak to you I don't know what challenge you have been praying and trusting God for but if there is a believer that can believe prophecy tonight in the name of Jesus I speak and I prophesy to you let that challenge be turned in this season to your testimony. 
let that challenge be turned into your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen everybody that must rise before this month ends to make the word of the Lord come true in your life I stand by prophecy I call them and I provoke them to your life in the name of Jesus believe what I'm saying I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus any man assigned by God to be a tool to be used by God for your lifting I speak Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.